This is my worship. This is my offering. In every moment, I withhold nothing. I'm learning to trust you, even when I can't see it. And even in suffering, I have to believe it. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. I don't wanna follow my own ways. I'm done chasing feelings. It felt like a burden, but once I could grasp it, you took me further, further than I was asking. And simply to see you, it's worth it all. My life is an altar. Let your fire fall. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will. Worship the Lord along with this video. Pray in the Spirit.
When you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. You're the only truth, the life, the way. I'm done chasing feeling. tonight can we just stand all over the room you can let something play in the background that'd be fine and... hallelujah god we love you tonight lord and you are our guest of honor father god oh jesus lord minister tonight touch the hearts and lives of people father god the many needs that are in this house father the people facing situations that need your help your grace your strength. Hallelujah, God. She thought Let's just pray in the spirit for a moment. Can we do that? Ramati Sondo Just minister to the Lord by speaking in your prayer language. I you. Lord, we humble our hearts before you, Lord. We love you tonight, Lord. We lift you up. Oh, you are the guest of honor this evening in our life, in this church, in this room, right now, in this sanctuary, Lord. You are honored in this place, Lord. I ask God that you touch the hearts and lives of people, Lord. Those we welcome the Facebook family that's uh, attending online tonight. We welcome those that'll pick up this prayer meeting in the future and listen to it. Those on YouTube that'll be listening in at some point. Father, in Jesus' name, ask for a mighty touch of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, you're our translator. Hallelujah. If you've ever been in a foreign country, from my perspective, it would be preaching and they assign you a translator and you speak in your language and then they translate it into their languages and language and the, the best ones. I, I've preached with multiple translators where you'd have to wait on a couple of them to translate. But, uh, and that can be a little bit challenging, but the best ones that they follow the preacher. If the preacher moves this way, boom. They move. If the preacher moves that way, boom. Thank you, sir. They, they move. They're moving. You understand what I'm saying? If, if that preacher gets down low like this, that translator gets down low. The Holy Spirit just said to say that he takes what we say, what we do, and he translates it into power to touch the hearts and lives of people. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory, that gets released from our life, from our heart, from our expectation of living for Christ. And Jesus takes what we are and he translates it by his power to touch and minister. When we're at work and uh, dealing with this person or if we're at home dealing with this person and, and, and he translates by power, his power. Thank you, Father God. Would you just lift your hands up to him tonight? and honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Minister to Him just from your own perspective. Just touch the heart of God tonight. Get His attention tonight from your life. Lord, I want your attention tonight, Lord. 
I come to you bold in my faith. Your word says that I can come boldly before the throne of grace. And I come boldly before your throne tonight. Be exalted, O Lord, in this room and in this place, in this church, in, in, in our lives, Lord. Be exalted. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Lord, we lift you up. Lift him up tonight. Lord, we lift you up. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's, mm. Lord, it's not what I say. It's what you empower it with. It touches hearts, changes lives. If you're online tonight and attending with us live through Facebook, you have a prayer request. You can put it in the in the comments there on Facebook, or you can uh, text the number on the screen, 479-522-0172, and uh, someone will receive that and get that to us, uh, get it to Monty so he can get it to me. So just, Lord, we love you tonight. We lift you up. Let's worship a little bit more, and if you need to sit down, I understand uh, there's no condemnation, okay? And uh, Lord, we just lift you up tonight. Let's worship him with this song for a few moments, and I'm going to teach, I think. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Amen. I've got a lot of things laying here on the desk to deal with. And uh, we have some prayer requests we, that, are, that are coming in already. Uh, different. Someone texted me and then I guess they posted. I don't know. I'm not looking at Facebook. In Mark chapter 4, I want to talk about a principle of prayer tonight. I can remember being a baby Christian. And I'm going to put that in the first year of my Christian life. Matter of fact... Friday, I will be 46 years old as a Christian, 46 years that I've, I've served the Lord and uh, that he's given me strength. I'm very thankful for that. And I know you are, you're thankful when the Lord touched your heart and saved your life. There's a couple things I remember uh, learning uh, from people in our church that were praying, praying people. And, and, and I'm just going to share two of them with you, but I've got a, a Bible application here to, to share with us tonight. I don't know how far or how deep I'll go, but we'll just try, I'll try my best to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And uh, one of the things that I was taught right after I got saved 
is uh, the power of praying in the name of Jesus. Now, that doesn't mean you can, you know, I want Monty to fall down and hurt himself over there in Jesus' name, right? You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's not how that operates. When you're praying according to the will of God and you're praying the, the word of God, which is God's will, you can then authoritatively speak in the name of Jesus, right? Uh, when you cast out demons, if you've ever had that experience, if you have the power to do that, I'm all for you. But the Bible teaches that we do that by the authority and the power of Jesus' name. Amen. We're doing that in his name. My name's not that big, right? Come on, somebody. Y'all get with me. Let's get on here quick, all right? And so we have to have this attitude that we pray in the name of Jesus. It's by his authority. And uh, the second thing that I remember, and it's deep in the notes here in, in, in all these places, but this is what I'm extracting after just laying it before the Lord. The second thing that I remember is if uh, I was tempted to sin or if I was tempted by the devil, I was taught to say, I rebuke you, in G devil, in Jesus' name. Anybody ever use that line with the devil, right? I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name. So praying in, that is a prayer in the name of Jesus, right? But I learned early on that I did not have to give in to temptation and live in a sinful state. But it was my responsibility to learn the word, the truth of it. Uh, and, and the knowledge of the truth does what? It makes us free. It sets us free. So as we get knowledge of the truth, if you're online, I hope you're getting this. This is a really good, basic discipleship teaching. But it's very important that we know this. As I study the word and I read it and I understand it, revelation comes to my heart. Once the truth comes in revelation, I then become responsible. What does that mean? You can't sit in church and hear preaching and revelation come and keep living the same old way that you have. Okay? And so I want to encourage you, as you understand the word, you say what to the word? When the word comes up in your heart, you say yes to it. You obey the word and you try to walk out, live out, grab hold of that truth. And at least that truth that you've got right there, you live it. Now, as you grow and you learn more truth, what happens is you become more mature. You become stronger. The foundation of your Christian life becomes more rock solid. You're not wishy-washy anymore. So if you've been in church for a long time in your life and you live a wishy-washy Christian life, you need to maybe make another trip to Jesus and say, Lord, I need you to teach me your word so that I can get it inside of me. I want to understand it so I can walk away. I want something inside of me to change when I'm exposed to the word, right? When I'm exposed to the word, I want to change and be what the word says I need to be, right? So two things we're talking about, praying in the name of Jesus and then learning how to rebuke the devil, right? And all this is back here in scripture. I've got it in this lesson. Unfortunately, I've got 12 pages. You know how I am of study. It's only five, really. But I do use a really big font type so I can see it. So that's fair, right? If I was uh, 25, I'd probably have a page and a half, right? So you understand. Now, what I want us, and we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to teach this tonight, and then we're going to do it. Is that okay? We're going to practice it in the room. So I may turn the microphone on and everybody take a, a shot at this, okay? Because if we don't practice, we, pr we may hear it, but we need to get it in our heart where we can model it and go out of the room and do it. Does that make sense? They say, I'll never come back to prayer meeting again. Right? I heard that. It, uh, you don't have to be afraid. You're among friends, but we learn how to operate and work in a small circle like this, and then God will elevate our gift and strengthen it and make it bigger where it has more influence. Everybody with me? But it's good to get it, and it's good to practice in front of one another. I want to give you a passage of Scripture in, in Mark chapter 4. I'm just going to talk about part of it, and then I'm going to read just a couple verses. In Mark chapter 4, at the end of that chapter, uh, Jesus spoke to the disciples, said, get in the, po the boat, we're going to go across the other side. And the story goes that a, sta a storm came up. They weren't alone. I, how many times have I read this story? How many times have I preached or taught from it? But it says, here's a key thing right here. I just saw it. Uh, they took him along in the boat as he was. 
other little boats were also with him. He was in one of the boats, and then there were other boats. I thought that, I, okay, I don't know, understand all that, but they had a crew going, right? So that the storm's coming up, the boat's filling with water, and uh, Jesus was in the back of the boat. He was asleep, the Bible says he was asleep on a pillow. I'm sure he was tired from ministering, and he was going to another ministry point, and he needed a break. And uh, finally, one of the disciples went to him and awakened him and said, and, and I don't know what kind of tone I want to read this in because uh, it says, they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, I don't know how you would talk to somebody if the boat was filling up with water, but I think I may have been a little bit different. We're dying and we need your help. You know what I'm saying? We're going to drown if you don't do something, right? And if they were experiencing this in boat number one, all the other boats around them were in the same storm. This was, if you will, nature at its finest, and the devil was going to have an opportunity to use this, and he already is with the disciples because their faith is being challenged, right? But it is an attack of the enemy upon the ministry of Jesus and his ministry team, okay? So Jesus... You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not like this. I don't know that you can wake me up early in the morning or from a sound sleep and I get up and automatically Jesus rebuked the wind. What does that mean? He spoke to the wind. That's what we're going to talk about is speaking to a storm. He, re, he, he, he arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea. He spoke this to the sea. Many of you have read this in the Bible and you know the next three words. He said... Peace be still. I remember this has been years ago. Dakota is 30, and he was just a little guy, six, seven, eight years old. And uh, I'd taken him to school that morning, and we lived south of Fort Smith. I was coming down on 71 Highway, down the hill, and I was listening to Spirit 106. And uh, I want to say it might have been 95 Alive, because, unless Gary Brown worked at Spirit 106. That's how long ago this was. And Gary Brown was talking about there's a tornado in the area and it's touched the ground here and he's naming. And I looked over coming down that hill and honestly, it's, if you're on 71, you look back toward our new property up on that hill, that tornado wasn't on top of that hill, but it was over toward the north, over toward Barling, okay? And in that area. And I could see the, the, the funnel cloud moving. And I just agreed in, in prayer with him, and I spoke to the storm with Gary. He was praying live on the radio right then. And he spoke to that storm, and he said, Peace be still. And I shouted the same thing in my, riding in my little Mazda truck going down the road. You know what I'm saying? Peace be still. And I had to keep driving, and I couldn't keep watching the storm. I'm headed home. But in a few, just in moments, not even a minute, I don't think, he said, I'm looking at the radar now, and the weatherman is saying the storm has broke up, and it is dissipating, and it's moving out of the area. The name of Jesus and the power to rebuke darkness, we have authority over nature. Amen? Amen. I practiced that yesterday in the pond on the property, catching bass out of the pond. I finally went down there. My arm sore. I'm being honest. I fished so hard in an hour and 15 minutes in the wind in the cold yesterday, right? He rebuked the wind, said to the sea, peace be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Wow, the storm went away. I've seen this happen more than one time. You say, well, how, 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 what happened? I can remember on staff at a church in Louisiana, it rained every afternoon. We're having a softball tournament. If it rains, it shuts the whole thing down. We've got to finish it the next week. I gathered some guys together and said, hey, they're saying, look, the cloud's right there. It's coming this way. Boom. It's going to be here in a minute. We've got to pray. That storm broke up, went around the ball field, and rained everywhere around us. One of them summer afternoon showers passed right by, and we kept playing ball. Never knew anything different. Now, whatever year that was, I can't remember, but I do remember this in 2006. Standing on a platform, right before the service started, we were in Batari, Rwanda, in a huge thunderstorm. It was miles across. You could see nothing but darkness. 
And I gathered the team together. We were behind the platform. And I said, we've got to rebuke this storm. And so we prayed for about 10, 15 minutes. And the same thing happened. It rained, it thundered, it lightened. You could, it was like you were sitting in an amphitheater and you could turn like this and look around. And it was all around you in that thundercloud. But where that, where that crusade was at that night, not a drop of rain. And I'm going to be very honest with you, the wind quit blowing. You know how the wind blows during a thunderstorm? It all just got still. Boom. And it happened. As a Christian, you have this as a tool in your toolbox of prayer, life, and ministry. Your life and your ministry are really the same thing, right? And so I want to encourage you, Jesus did this, the wind ceased, there was a great calm, and he said to them, there are two words, they're the same root word, but they have two different meanings. In the English, these words translate to the word, the base root word in English of fear. But there are many, I, I studied some today because I got hung up in this and I couldn't get past it, and I think I looked up every time the word fear was used in the New Testament and the Strong's uh, uh, concordance, the G and then the number that they were. I found at least five or six different words the Greek language uses for fear. And uh, it was a, a Greek scholar who said you could say one word in Greek and any other language would have to use many many words to say the same thing and it's true it's a very uh when you say something in the greek language it, it, you got to say it with five other words in english you know what i'm saying so in this particular passage in this verse verse 40 he said to them why are you so fearful everybody say fearful how is it that you have no faith now either you're full of fear or you're full of faith Okay, because when they asked him, why were we not able to rebuke this storm? He said, you had a challenge of faith, not a challenge of fear. And you've got to let your faith be strong, right? I believe in this storm called this Corona crazy season that we're in. We know it's very real. Come on now, people have been sick. Many people in our church have diagnosed with Corona We've only had, thank God, thank God, somebody say, thank God, we've only had one person in our church that her life succumbed in death to this. We had a funeral last year for this lady. And so I, I don't want you to think, and I don't want you to get your feelings hurt that I'm trying to say that Corona is not real, because I did not say that. Every sickness and disease is real. It just doesn't come from God. It comes, it comes from darkness, okay? Sickness and disease comes from darkness. And what he's trying to do is put a spirit of fear on you or you to operate in fear instead of in your faith. And how many of you understand? I understand this more and more. The more I grow in Christ and understand about him as a Christian, the more I understand that I really don't have that great of faith. But I thank God that he promised it didn't take a lot of faith if I just had the size of faith as a mustard seed, right? That's all I got to have. So all of us, the Bible also says that all of us have been given a measure at salvation. You are given a measure of faith. And so that measure is more than just one mustard seed, okay? So you've got more faith. And what God gave you, not that your faith shouldn't grow, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. You can read it, you can listen to it, you can go to church and get it. But if you get the revelation of God's word revealed in your heart, it's opened up where you have the understanding. Now I have what? After understanding, I have responsibility to walk that out. And do what the Word says. Obey Christ. Jesus is the Word. So I'm going to live according to the principles, principles of what Jesus taught. Somebody say amen, amen. Right? So once I've got all this developed, I'm exercising my faith. And my faith begins to grow. And in a given situation, if you find yourself without the faith, faith is not what's in your heart. Faith is what's in your head. And what's in your heart should be spoken by your mouth. You've got faith in your heart. You've got to speak it out of your mouth. Doesn't matter how much, but you speak. What's this about tonight? It's to speak the word to your situation. 
Period. Whatever your situation is, you don't have to lose. You don't have to get behind. You don't have to be overwhelmed. You speak the word to your situation. Find you a promise in the word of God that you can speak in prayer. And you draw out that sword of the spirit. And you go to war with that word from the book. And you begin to speak God's word. The promises of God are yes and amen. You either agree or you don't. Okay, they're very simple. You have to grasp them and say, yes, I'm going to do this. Now, this sounds really basic, but I'm telling you, we, this is something we have to maintain in our Christian life to be strong and to operate in what Jesus wants us to do in the earth, right? Whatever he made you for, that's who you're supposed to be in the earth. You are Christ in you, the hope of glory. And as you operate in the word and you stand on faith, boom, these things will come to pass in your life. Never doubt the power of Jesus and the spoken word. Jesus himself operated in this when he spoke to the storm and said, peace, be still. And that's a good promise to start with. If you find yourself, I'm going to give you an illustration of this. Kathy's daughter, uh, Michelle, is having surgery two weeks from tomorrow. And she has an aneurysm in her brain right about here, back in her brain. You said it was as long as a finger back in there. Is that right? That's what I understood. And they're actually going to go through her head, behind the ear and the head, and go in there. And they're going to clamp off the blood to that, I guess, and reconnect that blood vessel so it can go to the brain. It's got to because you've got to have the blood to operate, right? Why? Why do I say that? Anybody know? Because of the Word. The Word says life is in the blood. Okay? No blood, no life. Okay? So life is in the blood. So what are we going to speak to this storm? Peace be still in Michelle's life. What else can we pray for Michelle? Lord, while she's going through this situation, reveal the knowledge of your Word in her heart. Whoo, glory. Lord, send a ministering angel to go right there in that room with her. Lord, if you can send Gabriel to speak to Mary that she's going to be the mother of Jesus, Michelle needs a Gabriel moment where an angel comes and addresses her. You say, can that happen or that just happens in the Bible? It can happen right now in this room in your life. You say, why do you say that with such confidence? Because I was laying in the bed dying in a situation. I, I didn't know it at the time. I, I got enough strength to get up and go to the doctor after this experience. When I woke up, there were, I thought they were demons. I was not sure, but there were two spirit beings in the bedroom with me. And, and I looked up and saw them. I'm getting ready to draw my sword and fight. And, and, and I'm starting to, well, I, I may have. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I don't remember, but I think I rebuked them. And then the angel spoke to me. He says, I'm not here to harm you. I'm here to tell you the Lord sent me here to you to tell you you are going to live. Rise up and you're going to live. Well, what happened? Whoo, man. Now, I experienced that. In other words, whatever level of faith, I don't even know. I was so delirious sick. I had not worked that day on the job. I was so sick I could not get out of the job. I had a house there on the job. And uh, when, when I went back to sleep after that, when I woke up in the morning, I had enough strength. I called the guy who worked for me. I said, William. I'm going to get up, shower, and I'm going home. I'm going to call my doctor when his office opens is before 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said, I'm going to call, and I'm going straight to the doctor. And, and I, I, I don't, I'll give you a call back later today to see what the doctor said. The doctor said, I want to put you in the hospital. You have pneumonia in both lungs. You're going to die if we don't get you better. He knew I was a preacher, right? And, and, and I looked at him. I said, I don't want to go to the hospital. People die there. That's honestly what I said. I said, but I do know this, if you will trust me, you give me the medicine, I'll go home and take it. I slept from Saturday until like Friday the next week. Now that was, I'm sorry, that was a Tuesday. I slept till Friday that week and uh, got up on Tuesday morning, went to the doctor and I slept for four days. And I mean, I, 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 I don't remember, Carla probably came in there and tried to get me some soup and water and I, that had to get up and crawl to the bathroom. I didn't have much strength. But I woke up and I had strength in my body. The medicine was working. You say, well, you believe in medicine? No, I believe in the name of Jesus, right? And I know I'm, 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 I'm talking too much and we got to pray. But I'm telling you, when you activate the Word of God, 
under the authority of the word, you can speak into existence what you want. And, and God can heal your body, period. He can heal you. It's, it, God has that ability. Now, I've got one right here. What, let's pray some more for Michelle. I'm not done with her, right? Come on, somebody. What would you pray over somebody that's going to, they're going to drill holes in their head and go into their brain and, and move a blood vessel, cut one loose where it doesn't work and connect it, connect it around? What, what would you pray for them? Somebody, tell me. Lori. A hedge of protection, life, and not death. Lord, we pray a hedge of protection about Michelle. In Jesus' name, we speak life. You will not die, Michelle. You are going to live, and you will experience the presence of God during this surgery. In Jesus' name, we release ministering angels to minister to her. To war for warring angels to fight for her life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This situation in her life will not move her away from Jesus, but it's going to move her what? Closer and more intimate with Jesus than she ever has been before. Lord, cause her to dream your dreams, Lord. Give her visions, dreams, send, send uh, uh, speaking angels to come to her and talk to her, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. Is that okay? I know it won't hurt your feelings. This woman has a, has a drug past, amen? And she's had stuff she's seen before, but it wasn't from Jesus, right? Devil, I command you to take your hands off of God's property. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. The Word of God says if I resist you in your plan, that you have to run. I send you on the run, devil. I send you on the run. Did somebody say this isn't happening for two weeks? Why don't we believe that when she goes back for surgery, they can't find an aneurysm? Why not? Why not? God, we activate your word in Michelle's life. Lay your hand on your forehead. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release the power of God to do a miracle. I speak to this storm and this aneurysm. I command it to go away. And I ask you to do surgery, Lord, and put this vessel back together so she has complete and full blood flow. Better than she's ever had in her life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here's another situation right here. This lady's name is June Bradshaw. She goes to church here. Uh, she works a lot of Sundays because of uh, the field. She works in the medical field. Uh, June had to have surgery because her right foot swole up as big as both of my feet together, basically. Okay? And this woman's suffering, right? And as best as she knows how, she loves Jesus, right? Right? You understand what I'm saying? Let's lift June up. Now, I want you to come up with a word to release over her. We're going to speak the word, okay? I want you to speak the word. So let's pray for her right now, and then you wave at me. And uh, I guess I need to get a microphone. And, uh, and, and let's pray for June, all right? She's already had a surgery. Let's, let's start there. Uh, we pray for June for a supernatural intervention of the power of God to touch her foot in Jesus' name, be healed. Sickness and disease leave. I speak to that foot, live, come alive. You will not be amputated in Jesus' name. The swelling will go down in Jesus' name. We will have good blood flow to this foot in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask you to divinely touch a divine miracle. This is something that June cannot say she did. A doctor cannot say they did. But Jesus, I'm asking you to touch her foot in power and heal her in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody have something they want to speak? I'll run the mic around. Anybody? I thought that I was why I headed that away. You got the sword open now. Ephesians, the second chapter, no, the first chapter, verse 18, 19, yes. and 20. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is Thank the you, exceeding Lord. greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power 
which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead yes. and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Yes. And then it goes on to say that he <laughs> has given us authority because Jesus has authority and mm. given us dominion that every name that is named, <laughs> not only in this world, Ooh, but Lord. also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet Power. and gave him to be head over all things in the church, mm -hmm. which is his body, the fullness yes. of him that filleth all in all. Oh, course, he course, gives course, us course. wisdom and knowledge and he'll give the doctors and the surgeons and those in charge of this the wisdom to know the power and see and recognize mm -hmm. the power of the Holy Jeez, Spirit Lord. as we pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Everybody's free. Amen. Everybody's free. So if, you, if the Lord's impressing something on your heart, I want you to lead it in prayer. Okay? I want you to practice what I'm, I'm teaching. Lord, we speak forth your word in Jesus' name. I'm going to give you an assignment. I don't know what songs are on the list, but Sunday we sang one, uh, All Other Names, Pass Away, whatever that song was. It's in the song list for Sunday, this coming Sunday, because I looked at it this morning, okay? Find that. We're going to use that here in just a minute. Uh, that song has been heavy in my heart. I actually asked the worship team to do it this uh, past Sunday morning. It was not on their list and they did a great job. I'm very thankful. Why are you so fearful? That word for fearful means my life is in danger. Okay? Alright? Now think about it. These men, many of them that had come to Jesus, the disciples I'm talking about, don't know about the others, but they knew the Sea of Galilee. That was, the, they went to work there every day, Right? That was their resource of income until they came to Jesus. I don't know who was running their fishing business, but they probably weren't fishing right then. They're probably using their fishing boats to get across to the other side, honestly, okay? So these people knew when a storm like this happens, the people that are out on the sea, they perish. Boats get overwhelmed, they sink, and people die. They knew this out of their experience of what they had. But then you add the Jesus factor, right? And we have probably all been in situations where we may have, I'm going to use this liberally, we may have been bumping the, na the, the laws of nature and what we were doing. Sometimes we color outside of the lines with our life, okay? But that does not mean that we color outside of the blood of Jesus or the protective power of God over you, okay? Now, if you continue to do that, that's not right. But there are sometimes we get over on the edge where we should not be and we create a circumstance. Or they may, we may face something that we don't know about and it can create a problem. You understand what I'm saying? So I want to encourage you, if, even if you're doing something that could be labeled foolish by any standard, don't, has, don't let that get on you to the point that you can't go to Jesus and say, Lord, I've done something stupid. I need you to help me. I need you to rescue me, okay? I need you to take care of me in this situation, right? How many of you have ever done something wrong? You don't have to raise your hand, but you all are. Thank you for being honest, right? And uh, uh, whoever didn't, they just got ahead of me, right? So the, 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 this word fear is really important. I want you to get the second word of fear. Let me find it here. Verse 41 says... They feared exceedingly and said, and it's a different word in the Greek. Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him, obey him? Even that, that's a reverential type of fear where they revere God at such a high level. Look, he spoke to nature. He spoke to this storm and you, they have awe and fear of God. And that's where these situations that I prayed that a minute ago, it's for the glory of God. Lord, do a miracle in June's foot for your glory. You be glorified. What would happen out in the streets whenever people in our church share it with their Christian friends on Facebook? All of a sudden, all over, we're hearing about a lady who had a foot the size of two of pastor's feet, and God touched her. The swelling went down, and she's dancing. She's healed. She's not hobbling anymore, right? 
That, that ain't because I prayed. Your faith may be the one that touched her foot, but we believe for God to heal it so God can use it for his glory. You listen to me. As I'm standing here, I speak this prophetically. There's coming a day we will see miracles. I know they will be in our house because we've asked for them. And I believe that there are other church houses, uh, right? Ecclesias that are standing on the promises of God's word. And they are governing the government of God in their area. And they are speaking forth kingdom principles that God is going to move again. Someone asked me the other day, well, it was Sunday, a man said to me, he said, there's no hope for America. She's going down the tubes. I do not believe that, okay? And if I'm wrong, I am wrong, but I believe that God is going to sweep across this land because we have a foundation of what God said in the past, and we have a group of of people, a remnant group of people that still operate under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, their lives under Christ, and God is going to move again. You say, Pastor, how can you say that? Because of John 3, 17. He didn't come to condemn, he came to save. And God wants to move, and God more than any, listen, he loved people enough that he released his love through Christ. God sacrificed his own son so that we could have a relationship with him. That's love that we do not understand. We read about it, talk about it, teach about it, rejoice over it. Yes, yes, all of it's great. But I'm telling you, we really cannot operate in that ourselves. I would not sacrifice my son for somebody. I just wouldn't do that, okay? But God did. That's how much he loved lost people. That's how much he wants to be connected to them. And Jesus is that bridge between God the Father and a broken world, right? God's going to move again, folks. I don't, know, I don't know what all the details are, and I can tell you this. It doesn't matter what's going on in politics. It matters what's going on, what we speak to the storm. Our nation is in a storm, right? There are some things that have been ruffled up that are based not in truth, okay? Many times we hear something that sounds true and it has enough truth in it, I'm going back to the book of Genesis. Do you remember Adam and Eve? Fell, they fell into sin in the garden. Why? Because the devil was wise enough to give them just enough truth that it sounded good, but not enough truth to make them free. Do yeah. you understand? He mixed the truth with a lie, making it an untruth. And we operate that way in a lot of areas. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about the church. Yeah. We got stuff that we're not walking in and living in, and we've got to we've got to move forward in that. Okay, all right. I'm gonna you get that song ready. We'll stay quiet and we're gonna worship with that. And we're gonna call all these things down. Here, well, hold on to it. I'm sorry. What I meant was, I want it after I'm done because I got about six things here. We're gonna pray over. Is that okay? And I got a mic in my hand, a mic on my head, and I uh, don't know which one to to use. Right? Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to speak this forth in Jesus' name. What I see God doing in the realm of the Spirit is He is sending loads of finances into the Bridge Church so that we can build a house to honor God and to operate in in ministry at the next level. The Lord has planned this, and as long as we walk in, the, in step with God, this will come to pass. Now, I'm telling you, money is coming in by the truckload. And I tell you what, if I sat in a church and my pastor said that to me, I would go order me some diesel for my truck. I would, by faith, go get me a thousand gallons of diesel to get the truck line running. I would do whatever I had to to open up a pipeline of resource into my personal bank account so that I could be a blessing to God's kingdom, this local church, this region for ministry. And I speak forth, I speak to the storm. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Now, listen, listen. We have operated. The Lord has blessed this house. We are not paupers. We're not even poor. There has never been a time, and this is the guy, he's on the finance team. He is our secretary treasurer on our board. And he can tell you, there's never been a time in this house that we needed something. The money wasn't there to get it. Is that not the truth? I can't take credit for that, folks. I'm just telling you. I didn't bring that much money when I got here. I'll just be very real with you. And, and God sent the resources 
checks in the mail, people give that we don't even know where they're at. We've got to hunt them down for three months to find out how to get them a giving statement. I'm telling you the truth. It just comes in. Uh, th this report, I got a report from Monty on Facebook. Was that six weeks? Over 10,000 people have engaged our services in the last six weeks. In 30 days, over 10,000 people have engaged our Sunday or Wednesday night service by engaging our online church. I need to hire an online church pastor. If y'all know somebody that wants that job, I'll pay them to do it. I'm, I'm serious. We, we try our best to take care of that, but those people need to be pastored, okay? We need to find, doesn't matter if they live in Timbuktu, Kansas, if they live across the road, or if they're over in India, like Najar Arjuna may be on here tonight. I'm not, I hadn't been looking at my phone. He's a pastor in India that's in this family, okay? He got upset. He said, why am I not the top fan at the Bridge Church? That's on Facebook. <laughs> the more you like, the more you share, the more you talk about it. And he does all the time. And he was upset because he wasn't the top fan at the Bridge. <laughs> Amen. And I, I don't know anything about that. So I messaged Monty and tell him, hey, what we got going on here? You know what I'm saying? And uh, Monty explained to him, well, the more he likes, it does somebody else. And I've noticed Tom Francis just sits there and likes. He'll have 20 likes in a service. And I'm wondering why these people doing this and it gives them more points, I guess, so they can be a top fan. So now, Georgina, if you're listening, you got to get busy with your thumbs, okay? And we'll put you... We don't put people there. It's done by your activity when we are alive. So I, I think all that's cool. Father God, I want to thank you for the increased resources in this house. I want to remind everybody... And let me tell you, there, there are people that are in the life of this church and missions that we're connected to. They need resources. We tithe. Our church is a tither. We believe in the tithing covenant, okay? And every uh, uh, 10 cents out of every dollar, 10% of all our income goes into a mission fund, and we help other people, okay? We use that. In, in, in international missions, local missions, uh, roundabout missions, whatever's needed, we do our best to release those funds where the Holy Spirit leads us. It's Much of it's through relationships with people we know, we have a relationship with. So, but we do. How many of you know those people need help? And if we get help, they get help, right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to come back to the second one later. Amen. We'll do that one last. How many of you understand, um, and there are a lot of jokes on Facebook, some of my builder friends, uh, building materials, a two-by-four that used to be $2.29 at Home Depot is now over $8. Same board, eight feet long, one and a half inches by three and a half inches. Plain board you put in the wall to build a wall. You with me? Okay. And uh, that's a 400% that's a increase, is that right? I know it's four times more. Doesn't matter, three or 400% increase. I'm going to lay my hands on this request. Father, I want to thank you that <laughs> the, the scripture the Lord gave me over this, I was out at the land work and he spoke this word to me that he can win by many or he can win by few. He's either going to send more money in or he is, uh, the prices of materials are going to go down where it fits the amount of money we have. But the Lord's going to send the materials to build the buildings we need to build. Amen? Oh, glory to God. We want to thank you, Lord. We, do, we, we are going to win if it be by many, by lots of money, or by a little bit of money. Now, Lord, you know how I'm made and how I steward. And I don't like spending $8 and something on a board that I should be paying $2 and something. So you, for me to spend that kind of money, you may have to fix something inside of me that's not there. You may have to create something new in this leader. I don't know, Lord, but I, I'm just saying it would be very difficult for me to buy that board. And many of them that have to be bought. So, Lord, I, I need your help to, to say yes to turn loose of that kind of money, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, But, Lord, I know that you love the people in this region, in this River Valley. I know you love the lost. I know you love all these church people, as good or bad as they may be, Lord. I know you love them in a way that I, I would never be able to love. You love us, Lord, unconditionally, Lord. You never once put a condition on your love. And Lord, it, our motive is, Lord, is to build a facility that can operate to do the ministry that you need done in the River Valley 
that is a ministry tool. This building, this property, and all of the things on it are ministry tools. And we call them forth in Jesus' name, the supplies that are needed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Friday of last week, we submitted the conditional use application to the city of Fort Smith. And we have three more hoops to jump through. The first hoop is Monday night. Neighbors around our property are invited to come to a meeting and ask any question they want to about who we are and what we're going to do on that land. And uh, that meeting's going to go well. We're meeting, I chose a, a nice room at a restaurant. And if they come in, and I'm going to feed them a steak, right? Soften them up. Whatever they want to eat, we're going we're gonna to feed them and love on them, right? They're our neighbors, yep. right? And uh, that's what kindness does, right? I'm just being honest. That's what kindness does. So that's the, the, the next week we go uh, to a study session with people that look at all the documents we've submitted and they look at it and want to understand it. And I've learned more about our building today because Scott told me what all that is on the outside of that picture. It's really cool, okay? And, and it was really different. Anyway, it's something. And, uh, but... That's the next step. The third and last is we go to a night meeting with the uh, planning commission, uh, and they review all of this, and a recommendation comes from the city of Fort Smith to the planning commission, and they actually vote, yes, you can build a church there, or no, you cannot, okay? And we have lots of reasons to believe there's a yes coming, but how many of you know we want to hand God's favor on this? Hallelujah. Lord, I want to thank you that you have gone before us, Lord. Lord, you've even come in behind us and you're protecting us from the backside. We, things we do not even see in the natural or the spirit you are taking care of, and we thank you for that. We release you to work in the hearts and minds and lives of individuals that uh, make these decisions. Our neighbors, Lord, we want them to, to sense and feel and know that we love them and care about them and we want to be a good neighbor. And, and Lord, while I'm praying that probably, I don't know, a hundred acres that wraps around our property, whoever owns that, Lord, let's just make them wealthy enough. They'll say, you know, we keep dealing with having to pay the taxes. We're just going to give this to the church. Lord, we need more land already because the vision has gotten bigger because you've done so much already, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we'll fix the fence and we'll run cows on it in Jesus' name. We'll do what we have to do until the time comes to do what you want done with it, Lord. We'll, we'll make it make money and be prosperous while it's in our hands. Thank you for that land. Now, that's been confirmed. On Easter Sunday, one of our elders was riding with his grandkids. And one, out of the mouth of babes, one of those children sitting in the UTV looked and said, Poppy, whose land is that? And it got all over him and he said, well... He answered her the truth, but what was going on in his spirit was, it belongs to the Bridge Church. Amen. So the child says, who's that? Because that child in her world, children do not have boundaries, right? And that fence is there. But how many of you know, you've been around that fence. Some of you have been over by that fence. There's big gaps in there, right? I mean, the, the wire's down. You can go in and out from our property to theirs without any borders at all. Right? And so as we've been speaking and praying over our property, the openings in those fences, we've released the faith. We've spoken in faith already. I didn't know that elder had heard that in his spirit. And I'm over there walking and praying, trying to get Breezy to keep up with me one day. And just over there listening to God. And, the, and, and I see that land over there. It, from our north side, it turns a corner all the way around. It's all the way across the north of our property. A lot of it down 540, Arkansas 549. And then on this side, man, you, it, it's, it's, it's several hundred yards across there to that subdivision. And so I, I got to seeing this in my spirit. And I said, Lord, I just say that's ours in Jesus' name. Listen to me. The Lord wants somebody that will stand up. And I need a bunch of somebodies to go with me. Faith doesn't cost you anything. doesn't cost anything to dream. Amen? And we need to believe God's word. Amen? The word says he gives us the land. We prayed that for a year last year. Every day. Right? Every day. Praise the Lord. So, Lord, I want to thank you for that land and that property. I thank you for the gift, Lord. I know you'll send the money in, you'll send the resources, and Lord, I just believe, Lord, as strong as you are, 
these companies can just say, hey, I, we're just going to give you all this. We're just going to give it to this church. We're not going to do anything with it. You guys can have it and use it in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to thank you for it. Amen. When something great happens, it's always because God moves on somebody's heart. There's a bridge church in Denton, Texas. The pastor there, uh, Dwayne White, uh, ha- there was a church in the area that closed down several years ago, way before COVID. They were out of business there. And he found this campus sitting dormant, and he began to pray over it and contacted the leadership of that denomination. They gave it to him as a church. Oh, my goodness. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to build your faith tonight. I'm trying to get you to dream. So conditional use. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brian Hiltz is operating in ministry at um, oh, Salvation Army in Colorado. He sent me a text right before prayer. Uh, Pastor Preston, pray for me. He was preaching in their chapel today, and a man out on the street threw a brick through the window of the building and came to the window and started dealing with Brian, and they had to have him removed and that kind of thing. Hallelujah. Right now, let's cover Brian Hilt's safe. Safety is what I say. I send angels round about 360 degrees all way around Brian, underneath him, over him, to his right, to his left, to his front, to his back, all the way around him, a circle of protection. Oh, glory to God. In this circle is an anointing of power that flow in Jesus' name. What Brian's dealing with is this is, I believe, the second largest place. I don't know if it's in the United States or in the state of Colorado. People are going moving to Colorado because marijuana, medical marijuana, can be purchased there. It's le- all legal. Recreational can be, thank you, it changed. And so people are moving there so they can buy dope and smoke it le- legally, okay? And uh, the people don't have any money. They come to the Salvation Army to live. And they're coming in because they want marijuana, and they're meeting Jesus, yeah. right? He'll have, and, he, and he's, they weren't having church even on the weekend. And Brian went to him, started a Sunday service. Brian loves to preach, and he loves, he's an evangelist. He, he loves to get people saved, you know what I'm saying? And then he went to him and said, well, can we do it all day this week? They're having church seven days a week now. And if you stay in the center, you have to come, right? That's the rules. Glory to God. We pray for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the state of uh, Colorado. Those who went after darkness are going to be uh, emblazoned with light. I pray for uh, uh, Saul to Paul, light transformations uh, under Brian's ministry and in, 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 in this ministry, Lord, that you would bless them, Lord. Bless them. And help them to reach souls for the kingdom of God. Lord, a revival to break out in Colorado Springs, Lord. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. Thank you for protecting Brian. Now, this one is going to sound political. And there's no way that I can help to keep it from sounding that way. But how many of you understand John 8, 32? The knowledge of the truth sets people free. Listen closely. There are many people in our nation that are bound up. What I'm going to share with you, they're bound up in this area. There are many church-going Christians that are bound up with this. And so the motive of me praying for what I'm going to introduce to you right now is not for, uh, you know, political reasons. Uh, I'm, I'm for God's politics to be released in the earth. And the Lord can do it any way he wants to. It's none of my business. I just want to get in line with God and do what he wants done. Maricopa County is the, lar- is the fourth largest county in the United States. And the, the county voting department has finally, by the Supreme Court in that state, made them turn over the voting documents to the Senate, which they hired a third party company to oversee the counting of all this, okay, and the reckoning to come on what is the truth. 
uh, maybe uh, former President Trump lost by 10,000 votes. Maybe current President uh, Joe Biden won by 10,000 votes in that county, okay? Lots of things have already been revealed, but there is going to be a legal audit done. Now, you say, why? You want President Trump to win? All right, I told you, I only want God's will. God can use Joe Biden. He can use anybody. If he can use a donkey, he can use me, right? And God will do whatever he needs to do in whatever situation he's allowed to move. Balaam, Balaam was being mean to his donkey. And God loved the donkey as much or more than he loved Balaam. He did. And the donkey started talking to him the third time when he rebuked his donkey and beat him. Boom. The donkey did something about it. God spoke through a donkey. Okay. God can do anything he wants to do. Okay. And, and, and I've, I've watched both of these men just a little bit. Both of them qualify as a donkey. Okay. They're both stubborn as they can be. And they're both wrong in a lot of areas. Because I do not judge them by politics. I judge them by this book. This is the end decision right here for all of us. We're going to come under the authority of this book. We either pay God now by surrendering our lives or we pay him in the judgment and we burn in hell. It, I'm telling you, that's not popular today, uh, ooey gooey preaching, but it's still going to be the truth when we stand before God. Okay. So I, I want you to love me. So this is not about politics. This is about in my world, I'm praying over this because I want to see good Christian people who are caught up in nationalism, caught up in Trumpism, and some of them caught up in Bidenism. Yeah. They're caught up in politics, okay? And they are bound by something and do not even know they are. It's like the scales are over their eyes and they don't see the truth. God's word needs to, when the tr knowledge of the truth comes forth, it will set people free. Lord, I'm just asking for a supernatural move Lord, in the church houses of revelation to come to my heart, to people who are for uh, President Biden, President Trump. None of that really matters. But, Lord, we need to know. Our nation needs to know the truth to settle the situation. And, God, I'm praying it will be different in this situation. This poor man, y'all going to have to help me. This, the, the guy that got the stranglehold and died, they've just finished the court. The poli Thank you. George Floyd was... It was decided in court that he, his life is no longer. We know that. But they decided that that police officer committed murder. Okay. Now, why do you say that? Because we need to pray for Minnesota, number one. My, what should have been a good, sweet, thank you, Jesus, justice has been done, has stirred up idiotcy. Yeah. And this is going on Facebook, so I'm accountable for it. On full circle around the situation where we should rejoice. Hey, this is, this is a good thing, a bad cop. We got justice. And I'm sorry that man did this, okay? I'm not getting into all that. I could give you my opinion, but it does not matter at the end of the day. All that got stirred up to another level. There, there, there are the National Guard is being called out in some states as I speak. It's happening today, right after this decision, because people are acting foolishly. That is a dark spirit in our nation that is causing this. I rebuke the devil and command him to flee in Jesus' name. You take your hands off of God's people. You take your hands off the church. I command you to leave. I rebuke you. You have to go. Take your hands off. I speak to the principality that is over our nation that is causing this to happen. I take authority over you and I break your strength and command you to take your hands off of our nation. In Jesus' name, freedom come. Lord, I pray for revival in your church and I pray for a great awakening in our nation. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We speak to this storm. And Lord, the counting, I'm going to speak forth in Maricopa County, the counting that they are doing is going to set people free, and it's not going to cause civil unrest. It's going to bring peace in Jesus' name. 
And I challenge every other pastor leader to pray this over Maricopa County. It has become a micro zoned in on county in our nation to find the next level of truth. Truth come forth in Jesus' name. And Lord, protect all those documents, Lord. If they have to get connected to the internet, they will not be hacked. Lord, the, these things will not be wrong. They will not be undone. They will be done decently and in order according to your will, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, I hope tonight you've learned a little bit about how to pray and speak to a storm and speak God's word and speak faith. And God changes. God operates on our spoken word. What would have happened if Jesus was in the boat? He would have had to dog paddle to the shore. I think he would have lived and the gospel would have went forth. He'd have died on the cross. But think about it. What if he had not rebuked the storm? What happens when we don't rebuke the storm properly? Right? We pray according to the will of God that truth comes forth in Jesus' name. Oh, number two. Amen. Would you all stand with me? Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song as we close. We're going to pray over this tonight. This list sits on my desk in my office, and I, uh, I pray over these things. I add to it sometimes. Maricopa County got added a couple of days ago because of the Give Him 15. Was that Monday or Sunday? Somewhere along in there? Yesterday? That happened yesterday, and that came from Dutch Sheets. If, you've not list if you're listening to it and you hadn't heard that one, go get, go get all the details that I got wrong or I missed, okay? Because uh, I'm good at that, aren't I, Tom? <laughs> Tom told me something twice yesterday morning. Yesterday evening, I said, now, did you say this or that? I still didn't, it didn't connect in my tired head. So, uh, the, uh, thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit has burdened my heart. The Spirit of God has free reign in this house. These rooms where we teach and worship and preach. and I'm t There are people that come into this room that sometimes they cannot, they've never experienced the power and the presence of God. And I, I'm not saying this is my preaching. Our worship team does a tremendous job taking us into the presence of God. And we're, we're learning as a church just to let the freedom of the Holy Spirit move. And just, I don't know if it was Sunday. It's another one of them facts. I forget. I'm going to say it was Sunday or the Sunday before a gentleman walked out. He He's been here a couple times. He tried to come on a Sunday night, and we sent him to another church. But uh, this, the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is what we're thinking was so strong, he just couldn't handle anymore. And we've got to pray that there's enough strength in the womb of this church to give birth to salvations. You understand? That's biblical. I can't call where the Scripture is, but I can find it. But we need a strong womb to produce Born again, delivered souls into the king. People that come in in darkness and they walk out. I'm talking, it revolutionizes their life. One of the men who discipled me when I was 15 years old, Stan Husserow. As far as I know, he's gone on to be with the Lord. But I'm telling you, he walked in a drunk, uh, used drugs, beat his wife, couldn't talk without using the F word. His life drank, uh, drank, and it, he was a mess. And he walked into a service, and God touched him. And he walked out on the trail of being a preacher. Now, he wasn't there when he walked out, but he got there. You understand? I saw God save his family. Oh, my and God wants to revolutionize. And I'm telling you, our womb has to be stronger. These babies can't die in the womb. They can't get in the presence of God like that. We've got to push darkness back where it has no power to, to, to influence them to leave the room. They've got to stay here. They've got to, they've got to get to Jesus. They've got to, be, they've got to get saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost and get on a track to be trained in God's Word so they can do what Jesus taught, right? Lord, I pray for a strong womb in this house. I rebuke the powers of darkness. You have no freedom to operate in our church and influence people, lost people or Christians alike. 
Any Christian that's bound up with junk when they come to this church will be set free. They will be healed from sin, from their past, from their hurts, their disappointments. Oh, glory to God, from their detours. Glory to God. People will come to Jesus. They will come across the bridge of Jesus from the earth to Father God. Who glory, hallelujah. Let it be so, Lord. Let's play that song. This song's been all over me. I think I heard this at the conference last week. It just rose up in my spirit after I got back on Saturday morning. And all I could remember was a few words of this song. But thank God for Google and YouTube. Amen. We'll close with this tonight. Thank you, Lord. Sata Baha. Do not be weary, Kathy. Do not be weary. Be encouraged. Hands up, be encouraged. Don't listen to your body. Listen to your spirit. As the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high.
Go ahead. You ready now? Yeah. To release it. You want a mic? It's a vision that I gave. Okay. Yeah. It's on. Okay. I was supposed to turn it off, and I didn't. I didn't do good. Um, a week or so ago, we've been praying for revival in the church and just that, you know, the kingdom of God would come in our nation. We've been mm -hmm. doing the Dutch sheets and the appeal to heaven and praying with him and just standing in agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was out with my dog in the morning, walking her and just praying in the spirit and singing and asking God for that to happen, that there'd be a revival and that we would see a shift. And I told you this about this already, but God gave me a vision and he showed me our nation just the nation and you can see like New York City and Los Angeles and the bigger places and the smaller communities and then over the bigger communities on the east and the west coast there was like a black web and this web was spreading and it was like this sticky like a spider web but really sticky and thick and as it would stretch out it would just like and adhere to everything it got on and it was going across the nation and it was coming out of these bigger areas and, and spreading and it was connecting these communities with this black darkness. And it was getting thicker and darker. And I was just like, God, you know, I know when we try to understand what's happening, it's a dark covering and a satanic stronghold in our nation. People are thinking things and doing things that make no sense because it's a satanic thing. And I was just praying, Holy Spirit, come, you know, sweep our nation, shift the situation. And so this black, sticky, gooey net or web over our nation. And underneath it, because it was so thick and black, it was dark. Underneath it, you couldn't see a lot of the sunlight, just a little bit. And uh, all of a sudden, this rain, just this rain just starts hitting these different areas and then soaking things down. And as I'm watching this, this net starts to fray. It's starting to disintegrate. It's, start, you know, it's like, and I'm like, the rain of your spirit, Holy Spirit, just soak us down. Just soak us. Come like a flood. And I'm watching this. It was a short, it seems long, but it wasn't that long. And so everything's starting to soak down, and it's starting to, you know, I could see the, the stronghold being released. And then the next thing that happened was the wind came. The wind of the Spirit came. It's like, and I saw big chunks of this coming unattached, breaking off from other areas, and just, it was, it was coming apart. And then these chunks, as they were chunking off and going into the atmosphere, fire, and they were disintegrating. And as all this was happening, the light, because this darkness was broken, you could start to see the light again. Like I was seeing some of the bigger areas, like New York and some stronghold areas of the demonic, and it was like there's light now. And I could see all this, and the Holy Spirit said, this is what's happening. You may not... You may not see it like right this second, but I'm coming like a flood. I'm coming like the rain. The wind of my spirit is going across this nation, and the fire of my presence is cleaning things up. Sunday when we were in the presence of God, like you were saying, I just was like, the Holy Spirit's like, don't extinguish my presence. And I was praying over our congregation that we would not extinguish what the Holy Spirit's trying to do. And if it's okay, I just want to pray that for us. If, okay. Holy Spirit, we just love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. And we know, God, there is hope for our nation. And, Lord, there's hope for the church. We pray right now, God, that revival would come to the church, that everything that needs to be shaken will be shaken, God. And that we would see that move of your spirit here at the bridge in our community across this nation. And, Father, that we would we'd see it, and it would be evident to everyone. The light is here. Darkness does not control this place. You control this place. We pray, God, right now in agreement with you that your Holy Spirit will rule and reign, God, and that this church 
and that your church would not try to extinguish what you're doing and that we would not quench you, Holy Spirit. But we would be on fire and we would trust you and we would speak, speak words of faith and speak the word and be encouraging. We love you, Lord, and we want to see you do everything that you have planned. Help us, God, to be... Uh, Help us, God, to be that healthy, spiritual virus that just gets over everybody. Let us be contagious in our love for you. Have your way, God. Just have your way, Lord. We love you. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. For, uh, Brother Donnie Odom passed away Sunday night. His daughter is Donna Pendergrass, her husband Ed. They, they, uh, they attend the bridge during COVID because Brother Donnie, they've not been able to get here. That funeral is Friday at 11 a.m. If you can come, I encourage you to come and celebrate his life. And uh, we've got to transition the chairs into a lunch setup at the end of the funeral. So if you're able and want to come help us, Ed, you can be a little bit dirty, and we'll take you as a table setter up, or you're close by. <laughs> you and Greg can come help us. I don't know how many Paul's got. We may have enough, but I, I don't wouldn't be able to feed all of y'all till later that day, but I'll catch you up another time and feed you. And uh, we want to minister to this family, and uh, they're anticipating a lot of people to be here, this room to be full. And uh, we want to minister to this family and bring some strength to them and some grace and some comfort. Amen. And uh, so, if you want to help in any way, can they talk to you, Susan, and you get their name? Thank you. Lord, we pray. Uh, the other family is, um, you may have seen on Facebook, Lacey Chamberlain's aunt, Ruthie, passed away. That funeral is almost, it's a different location. I, I won't even be able to go, but we have people going to go and represent the church. Lord, we pray for Brother Donnie Odom and his family. We pray for Aunt Ruthie and her family, Lord, that you would comfort these people, Lord. And you would help them, Lord. They, uh, they're going through a lot right now. Help us as a church to love them, undergird them, and even come alongside them, Lord, and, and be Holy Spirit to help them, Lord. So you bring them the peace that they need right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for uh, Pastor Kemp Holden. He, I have not gotten an update today. I asked my wife, and she hadn't heard from Carol. And uh, he went in the hospital yesterday. He'd been out preaching somewhere, came home, and had pain. He was in Michigan. He, I know where he was at. I can call it if I can think a minute. I know the church. Uh, one of, he's one of the executive board members for the fellowship. And... Uh, uh, have they found out exactly what was wrong today? They're doing testing to find out. Okay. They did not know yesterday. He spent the night in the emergency room because they didn't have room. So they're doing tests to find out what's wrong. Uh, he's in pain. That's the most critical thing. And, and when Carol Holden says to you, I, you ask her, can, can I share this and let people pray? She told me, she said, if they're praying people, you tell them we need a, we need a touch from God. So we're going to pray for Pastor, and then I'm going to pray for my friend Wes Courtney. Wes has preached here. Uh, he is the pastor in my home church in Walker, Louisiana, and uh, he's diagnosed, diagnosed with prostate cancer. And uh, his test last week, they looked at his bladder, and it was clear, and that was the last test. He's scheduled for Tuesday of next week uh, to have that surgery. Lord, I, I pray for my friend Wes. I ask that you touch him, Lord, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And, Lord, you know where I line my faith up with your power. I'm asking for a supernatural, miraculous touch from God to heal Wes's body and drive sickness and disease out of him so he doesn't have to have surgery. I'm asking you to heal his body in Jesus' name. Lord, I, I lift my friend and my pastor, Kemp Holden, up to you, Lord. I just overshadow him with your presence and your power, Lord. Reveal your glory to him. And I ask that you touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Everywhere in between, Lord, pain, leave his body. Whatever the cause is, be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we give you all the glory, Lord. 
We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, bless your people tonight. Those that's been online with us, Lord, bless them. Bless, Lord, this congregation that's been here to battle in faith in the spirit realm to destroy darkness. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that that dark black web of gross sin and darkness is gone in Jesus' name. I release the flow of your spirit, streams of living water to be released, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I, Lord, I just agree with you. I'm setting my heart in agreement with you. And when I see, I see coming up out of uh, on fire for God churches, I see a fountain of life coming up. It's springing up out of great uh, local ecclesias that are doing the, they're in line with what God wants done in the earth and life's coming out of them in Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Bless your people. God bless you for being online tonight. And uh, we love you. We'll see you Sunday. We've got a lot going on this week. Uh, if you can make it to the funeral Friday, we encourage come help us and attend the funeral. Saturday morning, we have men's uh, meeting right here in this room and uh, sausage biscuits, coffee, water. I'll get two for Ed and uh, I've seen him eat. Hey Amen. We'll have plenty of food for everybody. Y'all come and enjoy. Uh, we're going to have some guys lead worship and we're going to share together the word of God. We love everybody. God bless you. Don't forget Sunday 10 a.m. right here at the bridge. God bless you. Have a good night. April